first of all, I want to thank GSMA for this amazing opportunity to come and talk about an important topic. And I want to greet all the listeners a big welcome to the Internet of Senses. Now, what is that, you may one, might wonder. However, uh, I will take you on a journey on the Ericsson research vision of 2030, and I will explain it as we go along. And I will start with talking about today, because today, perhaps the swipe is the most important movement that we have in the world. This is how we choose information and how we actually lead our lives. Sometimes the smartphone is even referred to as the remote control to life. And I think it's so symbolic for 4G and the digital transformation that we have seen so far. So no matter if we are in a business to business environment or as consumers, we are using this little device for almost everything that we have in life. However, right now, uh, we have at Ericsson Research created a new vision for what technology can create in the next years, 10 years to come. And here we talk about 10 technological forces. These forces have been crowdsourced within the research community of 700 Ericsson researchers all over the world. And these forces will interplay to create a totally new uh, paradigm of possibilities towards 2030. This might sound uh, a little bit uh, dazzling. So let me take you into how this actually might happen. This is a messy slide. And it's describing several of the technology journeys that will actually end up in a totally new world by 2030. And here we talk about what will be uh, possible from a technological perspective in 2030. One of those journeys is actually ending up in the Internet of Senses. And by this, we actually are moving into a totally new paradigm of what digitalization may entail. So, the Internet of Senses, what is that? Uh, actually, the smartphone has been very much video-based. And how we experience Internet up until today has been based on mainly sight and audio, right? But in the near future, we know that uh, already today we can feel and touch internet through tactile internet with haptic feedback, for instance. And we have this really, really cool demo at Ericsson Research where we can actually play Jenga digitally. We use um, uh, a little robot arm where we actually lift the Jenga block, feel the heaviness of the block, and we can also feel when we drop it. And then you can actually have an opponent player on the other side fighting you over the block. So you can feel the other player actually pulling the block from you. The great thing when you have tried this out, then you understand that your body will not feel uh, any different the experience of actually doing this digitally than having done it physically. It feels the same. And this is really interesting because touch is probably the first of all the other three senses that are going to come to life with the Internet of Senses. So next we have smell. And to be able to smell the Internet will be really important for us to actually uh, almost feel no difference from the digital experience to a physical one. Uh, because we rely very much on smell when we uh, experience something, and it can actually create also memories. That goes also for taste. And I think to think about this is really, really exciting, because as you know, taste is something uh, that is very important for our experience of the world. And if you just think about the possibilities we could have if we could digitalize taste, they would be enormous. 
Say for instance uh, that you could actually make food that are produced in a sustainable way to, uh, and very healthy to taste just like the food that we love best. That would be an amazing opportunity, right? Because today food is actually one of the main uh, sustainability challenges when it comes to production of meat, for instance. Moreover, in 2030, we also believe that we will be able to control the internet just using our minds. So uh, thinking the brain compute interface will come to life at uh, 2030, uh, we believe. So, but when do this all start? Well, of course, it has to start with 5G. But are consumers really ready to embrace 5G? At Consumer and Industry Lab, we have followed this for a few years now. And what we can see is that co consumers are now ready to adapt 5G worldwide. In fact, when it comes to 5G, almost 7 out of 10 state that they are excited about 5G and they are willing to pay four exciting new use cases that are 5G unique. And this one has to remember. There are two conditions that needs to be fulfilled to actually harvest the consumer potential with 5G. One is that they need to experience a much better quality of experience when it comes to the mobile services. And the second of all is that um, you need to kind of bundle the 5G offering with exciting new 5G uh, unique services that we see uh, in the market. And I think that the Korean market is one example where we have seen operators doing this with big su success. And of course, I know that the Korean market is very special. However, I think we can learn a few lessons from this. I think one other thing that we have seen when we have studied consumers and 5G is that consumers are very much uh, anticipating 5G to be an immersive revolution. Because of all the 28 services or use cases that consumers are both interested in and willing to pay for are actually uh, have immersive components in them. And moreover, by 2025, this year, we first saw that the average smartphone users globally anticipate that we will all be wearing AR glasses alongside with our smartphones by 2025. So what could this look like? These are uh, AR glasses that are much more slim and uh, nice. And this is actually something that the consumers talk about uh, as well. That they do not see the smartphone as actually uh, the iconic device to drive 5G, but it's much more something like this. The other little gadget I wanted to show you is this 360 uh, camera that can actually uh, film in 360. And this you wear around your uh, neck. And one of our researchers actually had this while doing field work in Singapore. And it's so comfortable that she actually just forgot about it uh, after two hours. What if social media would actually be based on 360 video in the future? So what I think is really important to remember about the Internet of Senses is that it's not just a concept that we can think about uh, and, and toy with, but it's actually a paradigm that will allow us to think about new services and innovation. So for 5D, uh, we will see an evolution towards a new immersive era where we will enable using all our senses uh, online. For instance, just imagine what we could do with shopping in this new paradigm. So uh, I hope that you are as excited about the Internet of Senses as I am. Welcome to the future. Thank you.